in the wake of learning that Madison was almost attacked, how much information should police share with the community in active shooter situations? We'll tell you what one expert is saying. Also, the state Supreme Court prepares to rule on a Madison school district policy that allows trans students to come out at school, but not at home. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6, everyone. Eric and Charlotte are off tonight. We begin tonight with reaction to the Highland Park shooting and how close Madison was to potentially getting attacked. Right now, Robert Cremo III's past contact with authorities is under scrutiny. Police say they were contacted by Cremo's family members multiple times dating back to 2019. However, Cremo was still granted a firearm card by Illinois State Police with his father sponsoring the application for the card. The agency says Cremo passed four background checks between June of 2020 and September of last year. Meanwhile, it's not clear why the second attack in Madison didn't happen. Authorities say they believe the suspect didn't put in enough research and preparation in order to carry it out. Earlier today, Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes Conway spoke with CNN about handling gun violence in the wake of the tragedy. And during that interview, she talked about how the gun violence epidemic is multifaceted and what Madison is doing to prevent it. I do think it's important for us to take a public health approach here, and that's what we're doing here in Madison. We have an Office of Violence Prevention in our public health department. We're funding violence interruption and violence prevention efforts right alongside with our police department's work to take a data-based approach to reducing gun violence in our streets. Now, police, of course, play a big role in keeping us safe during an actor shooter, active shooter situation. But there are questions tonight about why police didn't share more with all of us locally. Catherine Merck asked someone who teaches officers how to handle these very situations. And she's live in Madison tonight with what she learned. Catherine? We know that Robert Cremo was in Madison just hours after he committed a mass shooting in Illinois. And we also know that he had the same plans to do what he did in Highland Park here. But almost all of us didn't know any of that until two days after the shooting. And an expert tells me that it's more complicated than you might think to get that information out there. There's a lot of information that the public does not know about these types of events. Brian Landers wants to be clear. There's simply some things police can't share with you by design. You know, it's not like a tornado where there's a, where there's, you know, a definitive, you know, uh, um, estimated path. Landers works to create police training for active shooter situations. He says responding to these types of threats is complicated. Although we live in a, a day and age in which we, you know, we want to consume our, our, our alerts and our news uh, instantaneously, Law enforcement is priori are prioritizing, so if they're prioritizing that they might have a lead on where the shooter might be or, or their focus is on a specific target area, then it, there may not be an opportunity to inform the public of that. Police in Madison say even though the FBI told them to activate their SWAT team, MPD didn't know that Robert Cremo was in the area. Landers says these events happen quickly, making it hard to give confirmed information to the public. The, the average length of an active shooter situation is four minutes. There, there is no way in four minutes that, that any police agency is going to be able to respond, uh, engage that threat, stop that threat, uh, and start to, to evacuate and treat the, the wounded and then simultaneously get the word out to the public. Moving forward, Landers says this is a problem that police in our area and across the country will still need to be able to handle. That includes getting out information in a clear manner and deciding when to share it with you. It would be unacceptable for, for law enforcement uh, to ignore the potential risk thinking that it wouldn't happen there or thinking that, uh, you know, that they are impervious to uh, a type of uh, tragedy like this. Late this afternoon, the Madison Police Department gave me a call and gave me some more of a timeline as to when Robert Cremo was in Madison. Police say they got a call at about 5 o'clock that Cremo's phone pinged in the Madison area on the 4th of July. Now, that one ping plays an important factor here. They tell me that one ping means they don't necessarily know if Robert Cremo was there. If it was more than one, they tell me they probably would have sent out an alert. But one ping means that it could have just been his phone instead of Robert Cremo himself. 
himself. Of course, we eventually learned that Robert Cremo was in the area and he left his cell phone at an auto repair center in Middleton. Reporting live in Madison, I'm Catherine Merck for News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. Let's get a check on the weather now. Gary Canalti has your certified most accurate forecast. Gary? Well, Susan, it was humid to start and then we've had some breaks in the clouds and that's allowed the sun to break through and temperatures have really warmed up. You can see a visible cloud track. We've got some uh, sunshine moving through parts of southern Wisconsin, but there are clouds to our south and to our west and to our north and that's where all the rain is. Even though the humidity is high here, uh, nothing so far across southern Wisconsin, but as we look at at, uh, high resolution radar. While nothing is there now, six hour future track radar shows the possibility for a couple of showers or thunderstorms to pop up at some point just because the humidity levels are so high. Temperatures right now, middle 80s in Madison, middle 80s in uh, Lone Rock and in Janesville, but dew point temperatures are in the mid 60s to the lower 70s, so it's very humid out here. <coughs> Look for an overnight low temperature of 69 with a chance of showers and thunderstorms tonight and mainly tomorrow morning. Then drier air moves in during the afternoon with a high of 77 and we could see some sunshine late in the day. Later on, I'll take a look at a forecast that includes a pretty nice weekend. All right, Gary, thank you. A combination of heavy rain and heat is causing an elevated level of E. coli in Lake Monona. In fact, the levels are so high, public health officials in Madison have closed all of the beaches for the time being. The water at various beaches is tested for E. coli and blue-green algae throughout the summer. You can check for updates online to see if the beach that you were planning to go to is open. Now to an update on an island. Iowa County man accused of beating and stabbing his mother and dog to death last year. Today, a jury found Sean Pickett guilty on all charges. The 22 year old was charged with one count of first degree intentional homicide and one count of mistreatment of animals causing death. According to the criminal complaint, the Avoca man told investigators he was possessed, hearing evil noises, and he says he blacked out before the murder. Pickett is expected to appear back in court on September 20th, a first degree homicide conviction carries a mandatory life sentence in Wisconsin. A Madison man has been sentenced to three years of probation for helping tear down two statues outside of the state capitol during a string of protests over racial injustice two years ago. 28 year old Jacob Capps pleaded guilty to one count of felony criminal damage to property and was also ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution. Caps entered the guilty plea to toppling the forward statue on the Capitol Square on the night of June 23rd, 2020. A second felony count for helping take down the statue of abolitionist Colonel Hans Christian Hegg that same night was dismissed. Both statues have been repaired and replaced. We are waiting on another Supreme Court ruling, this time from Wisconsin's highest court. It's expected to rule tomorrow on the Madison School District policy that allows trans students to come out at school, but not at home. Political reporter Will Keneally has more on this case and what we can expect. Will? So the case stems from a suit brought by district parents. They argue that their constitutional rights that allow parents to determine the kids' education applies here, and that they shouldn't be excluded if their kids come out at school. Advocates, though, see it differently. Trans students are among the most vulnerable people in our uh, society. And because of that, Larry Dupuy of the ACLU says they need to be protected. So it's, it's important for students, I mean all students, to, to feel like school is a safe place. Um, and it's particularly important for trans kids who may find that, you know, home is not a safe place uh, to come out. Which is why the Madison School District created a policy in 2018 to allow students to use their preferred name and preferred pronouns in school without informing parents. But a group of anonymous parents sued trying to block the policy, taking their parental rights appeal up to the state Supreme Court. It's unclear how the conservative leaning court will decide. What we are seeing legislatively and the attacks on trans people across this country are part of a larger right wing effort to um, attack bodily autonomy. That's UW-Madison professor James McMaster. He says what we're seeing here is akin to efforts to strike down abortion rights. It's important to remember that trans, non-binary, and gender-expansive youth are youth. 
they are young people with soft hearts who are actually just trying to find a place in the world. He added that some students may face things like homelessness and abuse, depending on their situation at home. Yeah, and so the other thing that Dupuy added there is that there are other instances in which a school might withhold information from parents. That includes when students seek counseling for alcohol and drugs. Schools allow them to seek that help without fear of informing parents. Well, thank you. Still to come tonight on News 3 Now at 6, an animal rescue group makes an unusual find at a lake in northeast Wisconsin. Plus, the DNR says black bear numbers are on the rise, and now they're moving south. Why, why you may see one and what to look out for when we come back. Summer fun means one thing. It's time to visibly say goodbye to crow's feet, vine lines, wrinkles, and under-eye bags and say hello to smooth, beautiful, younger-looking skin in 10 minutes with Plexiderm. Oh, my God. I can't believe I have no lines in my face. I'm, like, 20 years younger. Plexiderm smooths away wrinkles without foundation, without color makeup, and without expensive procedures. And it works in 10 minutes. Plus, the results last up to 10 hours. And best of all, you could try it for only $14.95 this 4th of July. This isn't the first time I've been on TV raving about this product. It's amazing. My friends, my family, they can't believe it. There's been creams, there's been lotions, nothing works like this. We were away on vacation. If you go down to the islands, they always want to take you in a booth and put some stuff on you. And my husband said, boy, that stuff really works. And I said, I washed this off hours ago. This is Plexiderm. This is what works. When I tried Plexiderm the first time, my daughter said, oh, Dad, did you get a haircut? And I said, no, I tried this Plexiderm product out. Oh, you look so much younger. I said, oh, thank you. The instant results are from naturally-based silicates found in shell clay. Once applied, your skin Skin tightens and firms, rapidly reducing under eye bags and wrinkles from view in minutes. The science is incredible, but the results are even better. No, this looks really good. All these lines are gone. Amazing. Oh, I shouldn't say that. I look amazing. It's like so full of myself. <laughs> I've had under eye bags for a very long time and it sucks. Finally, I tried something called Plexiderm. I put it on my face and I'm not joking. It works. So take action this summer and pack up your under eye bags and wrinkles and put them on vacation with Plexiderm. This July 4th is the best time to try Plexiderm at our starter price of only $14.95. Visit PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Welcome back, everyone. You may have seen a few stories of black bears popping up more often in Wisconsin from sightings in downtown Wausau to Waukesha County. That's because the state's black bear population has nearly tripled in the last 30 years. The current population is up to 24,000. Early July is the bears mating season, so they might there might be even more sightings of bears across central Wisconsin right now, which means food always motivates them and might push them toward higher populated areas. They're also trying to find as many easy food sources as they can, which is why they're starting to come into residential areas because people are feeding birds and feeding other wildlife and it's a smorgasbord for them basically. If you're having issues with a black bear on your property or in your neighborhood, the DNR says call the USDA Wildlife Services. While it's exciting, of course, to see them, they're best watched from a distance and left alone. An unusual discovery made in Fond du Lac County this weekend, according to JNR Aquatic Animal Rescue, this American alligator was found in Long Lake. The alligator is between 18 and 24 inches long and is currently in their care. He was found on Friday before being turned over to the animal rescue. They say they'll hold on to it for at least a week and try to reunite it with its owners. They suspect someone must have left it from uh, might have left it go free after being unable to care for it. And if no one claims it by the weekend, they will relocate it to an accredited sanctuary. Still to come tonight on News 3 Now at 6, set up for EAA Air Venture in Oshkosh is underway. We'll show you some of the exciting things the world's largest air show will be offering this year. Plus, Gary's back with a complete look at your weekend forecast. Stay with us.
Mess Furniture and Appliance Mart's extended savings for one week only. Hurry in for holiday doorbusters, plus up to 40% off special buys, and guaranteed five-day delivery on all in-stock appliances at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley off the Beltline in East Springs Drive. Attention homeowners, we're looking for 50 homeowners who need a kitchen upgrade. Mad City is Wisconsin's number one remodeler, your trusted local source for kitchen cabinet refacing. Avoid a lengthy remodel and stay under budget as we transform your kitchen in style in as little as two days. Choose new door and drawer fronts, countertops, and more. Our design consultants not only make it easy, they make it fun. Be one of 50 homeowners who call now and receive special savings. Free installation on your cabinet refacing project. 18 months, no interest, no payments. Senior and military discounts. We'll take before and after pictures and compensate you for your time. Call during this program for a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call with zip code and location to qualify. Dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. It's the final week of Steinhoffel's biggest 4th of July sale ever. Save 35 to 75% store-wide. Plus, get great deals on hundreds of bonus buys in-store and online. Like this Queen Beautyrest mattress, only $3.99. This reclining sofa, just $4.99. A queen bed, now only $7.49. A five-piece dining set, now just $11.49. So hurry in and save big during the final week of Steinhoffel's biggest 4th of July sale ever. Relax, it's Steinhoffel's. Politicians have been threatening it. Now the Supreme Court's done it, triggering a ban on nearly all abortions in Wisconsin, even in cases of rape and incest. And Senator Ron Johnson sided with them on overturning Roe v. Wade, punishing doctors and hurting people, putting our health and reproductive rights in danger. Johnson even said, if you don't like it, you can move. Tell Senator Ron Johnson to protect us, not punish us. This is your last chance. The biggest Stars and Stripes sell-off in Wisconsin has been extended for one week only. Save up to 52% off all doorbusters while supplies last. Plus, no money down financing. And get an extra 5% off all sale prices at checkout. Only at Ashley. EAA Air Venture is coming up at the end of the month, and there are many exciting things planned for this year's week-long event. Lydia Anderson talked with officials for a preview. Setup for EAA Air Venture is underway. Workers like Bob Dossman have been here since mid-May getting ready for the show. It's, it's amazing uh, what we what we have to do to put on a show that lasts for a week. Many of the campers you see already on the grounds are workers and groundskeepers preparing for the event. Well, the EA has somewhere between 350 and 400 buildings spread on all these grounds, and they all usually need something done to them. So I mean, it's like it's like working in a little a small city or, or a large town. The fields you see behind me are empty now, but in a couple weeks there will be several thousand people here. Director of Communication for EAA, Dick Napinski, describes what's happening this year as revenge tourism. People who have been sitting back for a couple of years waiting to go back out, they're vaccinated, they're ready, they want to get back out. There are many new things people can expect to see this year. EAA is celebrating the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force. They will also also be showing both Top Gun movies at the Fly-In Theater. Of course, everybody's been talking about Top Gun this year, and we're going to have some of the airplanes, the bad guys from the Top Gun school, those airplanes will be on the ramp this year. Some of the Top Gun graduates from past years will be here as well. Dossman says he feels proud to be part of an event this big. There is no other event in the world of this caliber. I mean, this is the busiest airport in the world for the week that it's on. There'll be more airplanes in one spot here than any place else in the world. EAA is expecting more than 600,000 people to be there this year, and there will be many countries represented in Oshkosh. The weather will be a big question mark, too, but let's see what it looks like right now. Here's Gary Canulti with your first warm forecast. Well, it's still pretty humid out there, Susan, and it looks like that'll last for about another 18 hours or so. Three things you need to know in the forecast. Look for the humid weather to continue through tomorrow morning, and that will lead to some chances for showers and thunderstorms, but then as the humidity leaves by tomorrow afternoon, we'll see dry conditions for the weekend. That should lead to 
mostly sunny skies, highs upper 70s on Saturday, low 80s on Sunday. That'll feel nice. And next week will be mainly dry with the exception of Sunday night into Monday. A little more humidity could lead to a shower or thunderstorm chance, but the rest of the week will be dry and uh, looks like the humidity level should also be tolerable as well. Some showers to the south, showers to the west, some showers and thunderstorms to the north, but not much going on across southern Wisconsin. Maybe a couple of showers trying to pop up around Prairie du Chien. Uh, future track precipitation shows spotty uh, areas of rain. Some areas picking up maybe a half inch to an inch of rain and a heavier thunderstorm and then other areas missing out on the rain altogether. So it's just going to be kind of a hit and miss type weather situation that we have there. But the humidity is still pretty high across much of the southern part of the United States and it's just so hot here that you can't even get thunderstorms to develop. So that's where, where the uh, real heat wave is continuing. But the showers and thunderstorms on the northern edge of the uh, heat, that's where we would see a little, a little better chance for some showers and storms. And you can see this stationary front to the south. It's hot and humid south of the front, still humid north of the front, but temperatures aren't as warm. And then this cold front to the north will eventually drop southward as this low pressure system tracks to our south. When that happens, our winds will shift around to the northeast and drier air will start moving in and that'll move out the humidity. Notice right now, temperatures are still in the middle 80s, mid to upper 80s here in La Crosse at 88, just a tad cooler, closer to Lake Michigan and Milwaukee. But the dew point temperatures are in the mid 60s to the lower 70s across the state. But as we take a look at future track, notice a chance for a shower or thunderstorm tonight, nothing really widespread and the same thing for tomorrow. But then as we get into tomorrow night, notice that wind shift to the northeast. That will start to bring in the drier air and notice how the skies clear out for Saturday. Sunday, we'll see lots of sunshine. Then the winds start to turn a little more southerly and we could see at least a, a chance for a shower or thunderstorm by Sunday night and Monday. Six and 10 day temperature outlook calls for below normal temperatures from Madison to the southwest, but notice the western part of the country. That's where the heat will be building. And as the heat goes up, the rain chances go down. And even across the Midwest, we have uh, the highest probabilities of below normal precipitation right here. And like I say, ne most of next week, we're looking for dry weather. So that is definitely in the future. For tomorrow, look for a chance for some showers and thunderstorms in the morning. It'll turn less humid in the afternoon, maybe see some sunshine late in the day with a high of 77. On future track, again, a chance for a shower or thunderstorm overnight. The humidity levels stay high, but then once the wind shift around to the northeast, the air dries out. We clear out for tomorrow night and Saturday. Lots of sunshine, high temperatures in the upper 70s. Rainfall amounts spotty. Areas that get a thunderstorm could see a half inch to an inch of rain. A lot of areas may miss out on the rain altogether. And as we look at the 7 to 10 day forecast, temperatures nice for the weekend. A little warmer early next week, a little more humidity, but then the humidity level drops and dry weather pretty much for all of next week other than a thunderstorm chance Saturday night. Looks good. All right. Thank you, Gary. Some residents in Fitchburg are being told to boil their water after a portion of the city's water system saw a temporary loss of water pressure today. Fitchburg's south water system, which covers the Greenfield area south of Irish Lane, saw the loss in water pressure around 4.30 this afternoon. The city has taken test samples to make sure the system was not contaminated, and they'll inform those living in the area when they no longer need to boil water. Well, coming up, Aaron Jones back in Green Bay, but this time coaching why the Packers running back says he had more fun than his campers. Zach's in next with sports. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Attention homeowners. We're looking for 50 homeowners who need a custom kitchen upgrade. Cabinet refacing by Mad City Kitchens dramatically improves the overall look and feel of your kitchen. From soft closed cabinet doors and drawers to new countertops and a kitchen island. Create your perfect kitchen design and we'll install in as little as two days back to the lifetime warranty. Mad City has more than 50,000 satisfied customers and an A-plus rating with the BBB. Time's running out to be one of 50 homeowners who receive free installation on a cabinet refacing project. 18 months, no interest and no payments. Plus, senior and military discounts. We'll compensate you for your time. Last chance to call during this program and receive a free $50 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. From Madison throughout South Central Wisconsin, call with zip code and location to qualify. Dial 608-298-5383. That's 608-298-5383. Here's a dose of reality. Driving under the influence of prescription painkillers is just as illegal and just as deadly as driving drunk. 
In fact, drug to driving deaths in Wisconsin have increased nearly 200% over the past 10 years. Help prevent drug to driving. And let's achieve zero preventable deaths on Wisconsin roadways. Driving on pills kills. Why do dermatologists choose Dove? The Dove Beauty Bar is gentle, not only cleans, hydrates my skin. As a dermatologist, I want what's best for our skin. With one quarter moisturizing cream, Dove is the number one bar dermatologists use at home. At Menards, we've got everything. Supplies, tools, power, accessories, and all the extras to get you ready. Ready for fun. Ready for friends and ready for family. Get ready for summer with Menards. Pick up this 36-inch flat iron griddle, just $399.69 after 11% rebate. All-star athletes and celebs step up to the plate in an epic showdown at the Duck Pond. Tomorrow, find out how you can cheer on your favorites and help local kids succeed. And we are gearing up for the weekend. What kind of weather can we expect? I'll have the answer from 4.30 to 7.00. When it comes to the Bridgestone Senior Players Championship, the state of Wisconsin has been on top of the tournament the past couple years. In 2020, Jerry Kelly was crowned champ, and last season, it was Steve Stricker winning it all. Both guys were back in Akron, Ohio, looking to win another Champions Tour major. Not the best first round for the defending champ, and this kind of sums up it his day. On 18, Strick's power putt comes up just short. He bogeyed the hole. He's tied for 19th at even. Jerry Kelly wasn't shown on TV, but he's in a better spot. Three under, tied for third. Aaron Jones and his youth football camp returned to Green Bay today. And if we know anything about number 33, the camp was high energy and a lot of fun. Jones put the kids through drills while passing down some tips that helped him reach the NFL. Now, as far as who had more fun, Jones or the campers? Well, the answer might just be a toss up. It's a blessing to be out here with these kids. Uh, they're the ones who support me, uh, buying my jerseys and things like that. So just to be out here, see the energy uh, that they have and the excitement that they have to see me, uh, just puts a smile on my face and warms my heart. Um, you don't forget these kids and you follow their, hopefully you follow their, their career and their path and hopefully you, you had a little impact on it. For the first time in program history, the Madison Capitals have been named the USHL's Organization of the Year. And what a season it was for the Madcaps. After not playing in 2020, the Caps set a franchise record in wins, were Eastern Conference champs, and advanced to the Clark Cup Finals for the first time. And how about a little throwback Thursday for you? Remember this? Rose Lavelle put Wisconsin soccer on the world stage. The former Badger sent a strike into the back of the net to help the U.S. women's national team beat the Netherlands to win the World Cup. Was... Just seeing that, you get goosebumps. Right? Three years ago, wow, time flies. Yeah. It's going to be hot and sticky again tonight, right? Uh, yeah, pretty humid tonight, but the humidity should break tomorrow afternoon. All right, very good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great evening. See you back here at 10.